There is this amazing phrase by Warren Buffett that says uh, often it's not about how hard you row, it's about what boat are you in. I would like to start a little bit from uh, what is central to your philosophy, which is the idea of becoming an entrepreneur of yourself. Right. And perhaps if you can tell us what is the meaning behind this, this sentence. It's really serious shit here, <laughs> I have to say. First, I am a very tiny, small startupper. I never launched Facebook, Uber or mega company, so I don't have an experience about it. I have nothing to share there. My experience is small startups and more about trying to think what could be something good for me? What is success for me? Not, I mean, I don't care if someone else thinks that success is being a billionaire and having the Lamborghini. Uh, stay in Dubai, you know, this, I, I don't care. I'm really trying to, to stay focused on how can I be happy about what I do? Uh, what makes me really fulfilled about work and life? And uh, at the beginning, I did, did this huge mistake of trying to chase the Silicon Valley myth. Work hard, do the startup, get the exit, one billion dollar, go global, 24 hours a day. Oh, God, it, it didn't work for me. Going back to your question is, uh, you find your own philosophy. I don't believe in the standard category. Do whatever is good for you. All of us here are kind of ambitious people, students, you know, people already in the, in the work. And I wonder, having interviewed so many famous people, I mean, to <coughs> name a few, Jeff Bezos, or, yeah. you know, so many, so many f famous people and successful people. So I really want to ask you, have you seen anything in common between all of these business people that have become, or not necessarily, necessarily business people, but <laughs> successful people? And do you think there is like this magic recipe for becoming successful or, or anything in common mm. between these people? Luck. Well, uh, something that I notice often. <laughs> no, you know what? Uh, there is this amazing phrase by Warren Buffett uh, that says uh, that uh, often it's not about how hard you row, it's about what boat are you in, which is really true. So imagine that instead of doing all of my stuff, Bezos launch Amazon, call me and say, Monty, I just launched something called Amazon. Would you like to come to work with me? And I think, all right, he is bald like me. How do you say in English, bald or bald? Or anyway, without hair. And then I decide to go to work for Amazon. And then we move 20 years later and I'm a, a billionaire and I, probably would have done the same level of effort that I've done working for myself. But I'm not a billionaire, not by far. So I think it's really important to remember this. Most of these people that, that I've interviewed, they really had the ability to choose the right opportunity. So they picked the right opportunity and uh, they picked the right boat. Once you pick the right boat, which could be a new trend, you know, Instagram founder says, all right, on social media, will be images. Boom, they launch Instagram, 1.5 billion uh, exit, great for you. So you pick a trend or you pick the right person to work with. So I think this is very important. And then of course, each of those ones have different uh, features, let's say Jeff Bezos, for instance. I remember that we were having a, this chat. I was kind of young, I had hair with gel, with my little tie. I was working for KTG 24 Italy Sky News. And uh, I was really uh, prepared. I, I prepare myself. And when you work in uh, the news sector, the feeling of a journalist is always uh, trying to catch you. Like, uh, I will try to ask Bezos a question and we, he won't be able to answer. That was the, the goal. And I remember, so I was ready, I studied everything. Then we started to talk and after 10 seconds, I realized that he was so unbelievably good in everything. There was no chance about it. But at one point he says, look, uh, we're launching Kindle. Do, do, do you know Kindle? Do you have a Kindle? Right. And um, I remember saying, yes, but Jeff, do you know the iPad? You know, I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> they have color. Kindle is gray, it's a bit. Are you sure about it? Okay. And he looked at me thinking, probably, is a fucking idiot. And, <laughs> and but he smiled and, and started to treat me like a little baby, a baby that you have to teach about life. And he looked at me and said, oh, all right, let me ask you a question like that. And I say, yeah, Jeff, tell me everything. Do you think that reading is a 
fundamental activity for human beings. I thought, well, yeah, of course, reading is a very important thing, it's fundamental, you know, because you learn, you, you're, you, you practice, you train your brain. I said, all right, good. So every fundamental activity requires a dedicated tool, he says. And I think, yeah, yeah, that, that's probably true. If it's fundamental, you need something just to do that. Well, Kindle is for reading. So reading, fundamental, you, you get it. I say, yeah, Jeff, that's a genius idea, you see? So the other thing is that some of these entrepreneurs or very successful people, they are very smart in their thing. It's like saying Roger Federer is very smart at playing tennis. They master that skill. Often you, you overlook that, but listen to the, the greatest. And you notice, you know, that they know a lot about the topic. Most of the people, they know like 50% of the topic. But I've interviewed the uh, three Italian chess champions. When you talk with them, I, for instance, the Italian champion, oh my God, he, when he describes what he has in his brain, it's like a huge database of options and a, an historical archive of all the matches that have been played. He knows a lot, not a little bit, a lot. So this is the other thing that you say. So I think it was very, very interesting because I think you touched upon a lot of interesting things for us, which are, you mentioned kind of finding the right opportunity and to, in order to become successful and become like the very expert at it in order to then, you know, make sure yeah. that you're 100% know everything about it and you can explain it to other people and it potentially become successful. Out. Yeah. On the other side, mm -hmm. because life is always everything and the opposite, unfortunately, is like that. Sorry if I spoiler that uh, the next 30 years, but it is. This morning, we went to do a video. And this week, I tried to learn keepy uppies with uh, football. Okay? H how many keepy uppies can you do? You know keepy uppies? Yeah, palleggi. Palleggi, palleggi. Uh, do you speak English, guys? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, are we only Italian so we can switch in Italian or not? Are there are English people in this room? All right. <laughs> can you just fuck off? <laughs> I mean, it would be so much easier. It's like, do you remember Ivan Isevic, the tennis player? When he was always making aces and they say, we have to change the rule. No, send him away. Let him stop it. For you only, for your fault, it will be in English. All right. What's your name? I love you, man. Anyway, so we were doing this uh, keepy uppies, okay? Keepy uppies challenge. I never play football in my life. I'm the worst teacher. Ronaldo, you know Ronaldo? The opposite is me. Like, I tried to do the first keepy uppy the first day. I bounce the ball, kick the ball, and the ball goes to the neighbor. That's the level of my ignorance. This morning I did, how many keepy uppies in a row do you think that you can do in three days? Like someone like me, 50 years old, almost with problem moving, never played football in my life. How many keep you up? Just give me a number in a row without missing. Five. Fifteen. Fifteen. Thirty. Okay. Two. Two. <laughs> Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. What's the phrase? The skeptic sound always smart, but stay poor. But the optimist. Les très bien are often wrong, but they get rich. I don't know what was a phrase like that. Anyway, two. I did 97. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> True. I think it was a miracle, honestly. I wanted to tell you this stupid story only because if you put 20 hours of work, in something, you probably become better than 90% of the population in that thing. I did, I don't know, the Rubik's Cube. I tried to learn the Rubik's Cube. How many can do the Rubik's Cube in this room? One? Okay, so I'm very bad. I just studied the technique. I've interviewed one guy who is a uh, Rubik's Cube god, like that. I can do the Rubik's Cube. Am I fast? I'm at the world champion? No, but I'm better than 90% of the population, okay? How fast can you do the cube? I don't know, three minutes. No, no. Oh, fuck it. All right. <laughs> so, I'm, yeah, it's better. But, <laughs> but it is. So, other side, or you become super good, or pick a niche, 
start to understand if you are good or not, but it doesn't take much time to become better than majority of people. So that's the other interesting thing. What kind of book or advice uh, for people that are starting uh, a new company, especially in IT that is very competitive yeah. sector, which advice to be successful? First, I would go on YouTube and watch all the Y Combinator interviews and videos. Y Combinator is the biggest Silicon Valley startup accelerator, Airbnb, Reddit, uh, I mean Sam Altman, the founder of uh, OpenAI, ChatGPT company, was the, the, the general manager of Y Combinator. Paul Graham is the original founder. So I would watch all those videos, I would read all the essay by Paul Graham, he wrote a lot of articles and <laughs> thinking about that, fantastic, and, uh, and I think this this would help a lot to have the right mindset for that kind of world. Tech startup, which is a different universe, because tech startup is, we go, we have to scale, round, seed, round A, round B, round C, so it's, it's that kind of, of world, which is different than launching your five people company, so it's a different thing. Y Combinator, definitely, Paul Graham, great person. This is what I, what I would base is a very practical knowledge, not, it, there is no theory there. There are two other great podcasts, Million Dollar Podcast with the Sam Parr, which was the founder of The Hustle, bought by HubSpot for 20 mil, and Sean Puri, great podcast. You have a lot of ideas, a lot of examples, business models. And the other one is uh, All In Podcast, Jason Calacanis is the host, and then you have Chamat, uh, Sachs, uh, I mean, you have uh, like four people that they have a deep knowledge about this world, which is also very good. Naval is a great example, but it's more philosophical. You have so much stuff today, which is amazing. When I launched, for instance, my first startup, you didn't have anything. You didn't have YouTube. Yeah. So it was tricky. Now, I mean, you just go on YouTube. If you know the right uh, sources, like those ones, these are real. These are people who did great companies and they know exactly how it works. Fantastic knowledge for free. What's the best lesson for my life? Oh, three. Of course, three. <laughs> I was thinking one, I was already thinking, no, one is difficult. God. I think that if you marry the right person, it makes all the difference in the world. My wife, she takes 99% of the decisions. And I'm happy about it because she decides much better than me. So imagine that you are, you play football and you play with Messi. And then there is a penalty. And you say, who's gonna kick the penalty, you or Messi? So if you are smart, you say, Messi, you do it because it's better. So I think lesson number one is that the person you decide to live with makes all the difference in the universe because it has an impact on the way you behave, the, your values, your um, view of the world. Really do not underestimate lesson number one. Lesson number two, if you're on the right boat, everything is easy. Imagine that you want to launch a startup and you have four friends and one is a genius of AI. We have it. And, uh, one is a genius of digital business. We have it. One is a... Is it... Is in the... Co I'm joking. I'm, I was a joke. So, it's so much easier. Imagine if you launch a startup and uh, one say, yeah, but I don't know how to do this. Ah, good. It's so hard. So, have around the right people. Also, that push you in the right direction. I remember I had friends when I was like in uh, university or college. Oh my God, I mean, the class in Milan. Guys, what are we gonna do today? Yeah, let's go to drink a beer. Good. That's it? I mean, what? Where are they now? In general, in life, not in work. So, and it's good to have fun, but you know, it can't be that your habit is, I go to check the football match, well, go to the stadium, watch a football match, and then I go to drink a beer. That's it. That's your life. Fantastic. But I mean, I, it, it was not good for me. So if you get the right people around, that makes a big difference. The other thing is, um, to me, moving in a different country was life changing. And I didn't understand how Italian I was when I was living in Italy. I, I don't know if you tried this. When you move, you say, oh my. 
You, oh my gee, I was embarrassed for the camera. I thought after you know one hour that I say, oh my shit, that's all the camera. No, my God, no, it's incredible how if you live in in a specific country, you just see the small bubble, and it's so important to have a, an open view. This is so important, I think. So lesson number three is just uh, be inclusive, experiment being not judgmental. I watched this video about Jocko Willink. Do you know Jocko Willink? He's a former Navy SEAL. And he has this voice. <laughs> he will recognize. He, the face is like a square, like that. He's big, massive. And he was a Navy SEAL, you know, war, tough, tough stuff. And he has this big voice. And he has a fantastic video, like two minutes, and it's called uh, Good. I watched this video thinking, oh, again, a classic motivational bullshit. And uh, instead, it was such a good video. And he said, I was in war, during the war, one of my assistants always come to me and say, uh, you know, Joko, um, we lost one person. His answer was always the same, good. And people say, what? <laughs> You're like, are you out of your mind? But his attitude was always, all right, this is a, an opportunity to remember him better, to do better. They fired you. I don't know, I remember when they, they fired me from, from the television show. The new director arrived and say, Montemagno, you see the hand? Bye bye. <laughs> we shut the show, it's over. And I thought, why? I mean, that's it. But then if you think about it, good. It's an opportunity for me, has been an opportunity to say, all right, you know what? I don't want to work for a media. I want to be a media. It's a different thing. This kind of attitude helps. If you want to be entrepreneurial, I think you cannot complain. Because every day you have so many things to complain. So every time you try to say, all right, I don't complain. I go my way and I try to uh, being, solve the problem and keep going. And that's it. Guys, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Good luck for you.